Roald Engelbrook Gravening Amundsen was a Norwegian explorer of polar regions. He led the Antarctic expedition to become the first men to reach the South Pole in December 1911. In 1926, he was the first expedition leader to be recognized without dispute as having reached the North Pole. He is also known as the first to traverse the Northwest Passage. He disappeared in June 1928 while taking part in a rescue mission. Amundsen, Douglas Mawson, Robert Falcon Scott, and Ernest Shackleton were key expedition leaders during the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. Early life Amundsen was born to a family of Norwegian ship owners and captains in Borg, between the towns Fredrikstad and Sarpsborg. His parents were Jens Amundsen and Hannes Sailqvist. Roald was the fourth son in the family. His mother wanted him to avoid the family maritime trade and encouraged him to become a doctor, a promise that Amundsen kept until his mother died when he was aged 21. He promptly quit university for a life at sea. Amundsen had hidden a lifelong desire inspired by Fridtjof Nansen's crossing of Greenland in 1888 and Franklin's lost expedition. He decided on a life of intense exploration of wilderness places. Polar treks. Belgian Antarctic Expedition. Amundsen joined the Belgian Antarctic Expedition as first mate. This expedition, led by Adrien de Galaik using the ship the RB Belgica, became the first expedition to winter in Antarctica. The Belgica, whether by mistake or design, became locked in the sea ice at 78 degree 30 euro squared s off Alexander Island, west of the Antarctic Peninsula. The crew endured a winter for which they were poorly prepared. By Amundsen's own estimation, the doctor for the expedition, the American Frederick Cook, probably saved the crew from scurvy by hunting for animals and feeding the crew fresh meat. In cases where citrus fruits are lacking, fresh meat from animals that make their own vitamin C contains enough of the vitamin to prevent scurvy, and even partly treat it. This was an important lesson for Amundsen's future expeditions. Northwest Passage In 1903, Amundsen led the first expedition to successfully traverse Canada's Northwest Passage between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. With him were six men in a 45-ton fishing vessel, Kjaa. His technique was to use a small ship and hug the coast. Amundsen had the ship outfitted with a small gasoline engine. They traveled via Baffin Bay, the Parry Channel and then south through Peel Sound. James Ross Strait, Simpson Strait and Ray Strait. They spent two winters at King William Island in what is today Joe Haven, Nunavut, Canada. During this time, Amundsen learned from the local Nutsilic people about Arctic survival skills, which he found invaluable also on later expeditions. For example, he learned to use sled dogs for transportation of goods and to wear animal skins in lieu of heavy, wool and parkas which could not deter cold when wet. Leaving Joe Haven he went west and past Cambridge Bay, which had been reached from the west by Richard Collinson in 1852. Continuing to the south of Victoria Island, the ship cleared the Canadian Arctic archipelago on August 17, 1905. It had to stop for the winter before going on to Nome on the Alaska District's Pacific coast. 500 miles away, Eagle City, Alaska had a telegraph station. Amundsen traveled there overland to wire a success message on December 5, 1905. His team reached Nome in 1906. Because the water along the route was sometimes as shallow as 3 lft, a larger ship could not have made the voyage. At this time that Amundsen learned that Norway had formally become independent of Sweden and had a new king. The explorer sent the new King Hoak on seven news that his traversing the Northwest Passage was a great achievement for Norway. He said he hoped to do more and signed it your loyal subject, Roald Amundsen. The crew returned to Oslo in November 1906, after almost 3.5 years abroad. But, it took exploration fans until 1972 to return the Gja to Norway. After a 45-day trip from San Francisco on a bulk carrier, the Kja A was placed in her current location on land, outside the Fram Museum in Oslo. South Pole Expedition Amundsen planned next to take an expedition to the North Pole and explore the Arctic Basin. Finding it difficult to raise funds, 
when he heard in 1909 that the Americans Frederick Cook and Robert Peary had claimed to reach the North Pole as a result of two different expeditions, he decided to reroute to Antarctica. He was not clear about his intentions, and the Englishman Robert F. Scott and the Norwegian supporters felt misled. Scott was planning his own expedition to the South Pole that year. Using the ship Fram, earlier used by Fridtjof Nornsen, he left Oslo for the South on June 3, 1910. At Madeira, Amundsen alerted his men that they would be heading to Antarctica, and sent a telegram to Scott, notifying him simply, B.E.G. to inform you from preceding Antarctic, Amundsen. Nearly six months later, the expedition arrived at the eastern edge of the Ross Ice Shelf, at a large inlet called the Bay of Wales, on January 14, 1911. He established his base camp there, calling it Framheim. Amundsen eschewed the heavy wool clothing worn on earlier Antarctic attempts in favor of adopting Inuit-style skins. Using skis and dog sleds for transportation, Amundsen and his men created supply depots at 80 a degree, 81 a degree and 82 a degree south on the barrier, along a line directly south to the pole. Amundsen also planned to kill some of his dogs on the way and use them as a source for fresh meat. A small group including Jalma Johansson, Christian Priestrad and Jara G. E. N. Stubberud set out on September 8, 1911, but had to abandon their trek due to extreme temperatures. The painful retreat caused a quarrel within the group, and Amundsen sent Johansson and the other two men to explore King Edward VII land. A second attempt, with a team made up of Olaf Jaland, Helmer Hansen, Sver Hassel, Oscar Wisting, and Amundsen, departed base camp on October 19, 1911. They took four sledges and 52 a dogs. Using a route along the previously unknown Axel Heiberg Glacier, they arrived at the edge of the Polar Plateau on November 21 after a four-day climb. On December 14, 1911, the team of five, with 16 a dogs, arrived at the pole. They arrived 33 a euro 34 days before Scott a euro unregistered trademark S group. Amundsen named their South Pole Camp Polheim home on the pole. Amundsen renamed the Antarctic Plateau as King Hoak on via a Euro unregistered trademark S Plateau. They left a small tent and letter stating their accomplishment, in case they did not return safely to Framheim. The team returned to Framheim on January 25, 1912, with 11 a dogs. They made their way off the continent into Hobart, Australia, where Amundsen publicly announced his success on March 7, 1912 and telegraphed news to backers. Amundsen and a Euro unregistered trademark S expedition benefited from his careful preparation, good equipment, appropriate clothing, a simple primary task, an understanding of dogs and their handling, and the effective use of skis. In contrast to the misfortunes of Scott a Euro unregistered trademark S team, Amundsen and a Euro unregistered trademark S trek proved rather smooth and uneventful. In Amund's in a Euro unregistered trademark s own words. I may say that this is the greatest fact over a Euro the way in which the expedition is equipped a Euro the way in which every difficulty is foreseen, and precautions taken for meeting or avoiding it. Victory awaits him who has everything in order in a Euro luck, people call it. Defeat is certain for him who has neglected to take the necessary precautions in time. This is called bad luck. Amundsen wrote about the expedition in the South Pole, an account of the Norwegian Antarctic expedition in the Fram, 1910 Euro 12. Northeast Passage. In 1918, Amundsen began an expedition with a new ship moored, which was to last until 1925. Maud sailed west to east through the Northeast Passage, now called the Northern Route. With him on this expedition were Oscar Wisting and Helmer Hansen both of whom had been part of the team to reach the South Pole. In addition, Henrik Lindstra M was included as a cook. He suffered a stroke and was so physically reduced that he could not participate. The goal of the expedition was to explore the unknown areas of the Arctic Ocean, strongly inspired by Fridtjof Nornsen's earlier expedition with Fram. The plan was to sail along the coast of Siberia and go into the ice further to the north and east than Nornsen had. In contrast to Amundsen's earlier expeditions, this was expected to yield more material for academic research, 
and he carried the geophysicist Harold Svedrup on board. The voyage was to the northeasterly direction over the Kara Sea. Amundsen planned to freeze the moored into the polar ice cap and drift towards the North Pole, and he did so off Cape Chelyaskin. But, the ice became so thick that the ship was unable to break free, although it was designed for such a journey in heavy ice. In September 1919, the crew got the ship loose from the ice, but it froze again after 11 days somewhere between the New Siberian Islands and Rangel Island. During this time, Amundsen participated little in the work outdoors, such as sleigh rides and hunting, because he had suffered numerous injuries. He had a broken arm and had been attacked by polar bears. Hansen and Wisting, along with two other men, embarked on an expedition by dog sled to Nome, Alaska, despite its being over 1,000 kilometers away. But they found that the ice was not frozen solid in the Bering Strait, and it could not be crossed. They sent a telegram from Amida to signal their location. After two winters frozen in the ice without having achieved the goal of drifting over the North Pole, Amundsen decided to go to Nome to repair the ship and buy provisions. Several of the crew ashore there, including Hansen, had not returned to the ship. Amundsen considered him to be in breach of contract, and as such, dismissed him from the crew. During the third winter, Maud was frozen in the western Bering Strait. She finally became free and the expedition sailed south, reaching Seattle for repairs in 1921. Amundsen returned to Norway, needing to put his finances in order. He took with him two indigenous girls, the adopted four-year-old Kakonita and her companion Camilla. When Amundsen went bankrupt two years later, however, he sent the girls to be cared for by Camilla's father, who lived in eastern Russia. In June 1922 Amundsen returned to Maud, which had been sailed to Nome. He decided to shift from the planned naval expedition to aerial ones, and arranged to charter a plane. He divided the expedition team in two. One part was to survive the winter and prepare for an attempt to fly over the pole. This part was led by Amundsen. The second team on board, under the command of Wisting, was to resume the original plan to drift over the North Pole in the ice. The ship drifted in the ice for three years east of the New Siberian Islands, before it was finally seized by Amundsen's creditors as collateral for his mounting debt. The attempt to fly over the pole failed too. Amundsen and Oskar Omdahl, of the Royal Norwegian Navy, tried to fly from Wainwright, Alaska, to Spitsbergen across the North Pole. When their aircraft was damaged, they abandoned the journey. To raise additional funds, Amundsen traveled around the United States in 1924 on a lecture tour. Although he was unable to reach the North Pole, the scientific results of the expedition, mainly the work of Svedrup, have proven to be of considerable value. Many of these carefully collected scientific data were first lost during the ill-fated journey of Peter Tessum and Paul Knutson, two crew members sent on a mission by Amundsen. The scientific materials were later retrieved by Russian scientist Nikolai Ervantsev from where they had been abandoned on the shores of the Kara Sea. Reaching the North Pole In 1925, accompanied by Lincoln Ellsworth, pilot Jalma Riza Larson, and three other team members, Amundsen took two Dornier du J flying boats, the N24 and N25, to 87 a degree A44 a euro squared a north. It was the northernmost latitude reached by plane up to that time. The aircraft landed a few miles apart without radio contact, yet the crews managed to reunite. The N24 was damaged. Amundsen and his crew worked for over three weeks to clean up an airstrip to take off from ice. They shoveled 600 tons of ice while consuming only one pound of daily food rations. In the end, six crew members were packed into the N-25. In a remarkable feat, Riza Larson took off, and they barely became airborne over the cracking ice. They returned triumphant when everyone thought they had been lost forever. In 1926, Amundsen and 15 other men made the first crossing of the Arctic in the airship Norge, designed by Nobile. They left Spitsbergen on May 11, 1926, and they landed in Alaska two days later. The three previous claims to have arrived at the North Pole, Frederick Cook in 1908, Robert Peary in 1909, 
and Richard E. Byrd in 1926 are all disputed, as being either of dubious accuracy or outright fraud. If their claims are false, the crew of the Norge would be the first verified explorers to have reached the North Pole. If the Norge expedition was the first to the North Pole, Amundsen and Oscar Wisting were the first men to reach each geographical pole, by ground or by air. Disappearance and Death Amundsen disappeared with five crew on June 18, 1928 while flying on a rescue mission in the Arctic. His team included Norwegian pilot Leif Dietrichsen, French pilot Rena Copyright Gail Board, and three more Frenchmen. They were seeking missing members of Nobile's crew, whose new airship Italia had crashed while returning from the North Pole. Afterward, a wing float and bottom gasoline tank from Amundsen's French Latham 47 flying boat adapted as a replacement wing float, were found near the Tromsø coast. It is believed that the plane crashed in fog in the Barents Sea, and that Amundsen and his crew were killed in the crash, or died shortly afterward. None of the bodies were found. The search for Amundsen and team was called off in September 1928 by the Norwegian government. In 2004 and in late August 2009, the Royal Norwegian Navy used the unmanned submarine Hugen 1000 to search for the wreckage of Amundsen's plane. The search is focused on a 40 square mile area of the sea floor, and were documented by the German production company Context TV. They found nothing from the Amundsen flight. Legacy A number of places have been named after the explorer. The Amundsen a Euro Scott South Pole station is named jointly with his rival, Amundsen C. Off the coast of Antarctica, Amundsen Glacier, in Antarctica, Amundsen Bay, in Antarctica, Mount Amundsen, in Antarctica, Amundsen Gulf, in the Arctic Ocean, off the coast of the Northwest Territories in Canada, a large crater covering the Moon's South Pole is named Amundsen, Amundsen Basin, Abyssal Plain in the Arctic Ocean, Amundsen Plain, Abyssal Plain in the Southern Ocean. Several ships are named after him. The Canadian Coast Guard named an icebreaker CCGS Amundsen, whose mission is to perform scientific research in the waters of the Arctic. The Royal Norwegian Navy is building a class of Aegis frigates, the second of which is the Hanno Miss Roald Amundsen, the German brig Roald Amundsen. Other tributes include writer Roald Dahl was named after Amundsen, Nobel laureate, chemist, and poet Roald Hoffman was named after Amundsen. The Amundsen Trail and Amundsen Circle, Oakwood, Staten Island, New York, Amundsen High School, Chicago, Illinois A. Pullman Company Railroad Car was named after him, works. By Amundsen, Nordvest Passagen, 2 Vols, 1907. Translated as the Northwest Passage, being the record of a voyage of exploration of the ship Gjaa 1903 Euro 1907, 1908. Sidpolen, 2 Vols, 1912. Translated as the South Pole, an account of the Norwegian Antarctic Expedition in the Fram, 1910 Euro 1912, translated by A. G. Chatter, 1912. Nordist Passagen. Mode for D. E. N. Lang's Asians Keist 1918 Euro 1920. H. Use for Drips of Fold Blant Stuttgart. Godfrey Hansen's Depot Expedition 1919 Euro 1920. Guild Endel, Christiania 1921. Gjenum Luft until 88 a degree Nord. Translated as Our Polar Flight, the Amundsen Ellsworth Polar Flight, 1925. Also as My Polar Flight, 1925. Den Far Rste Flucht over Polhavit, with Lincoln Ellsworth and others, 1926. Translated as the first flight across the Polar Sea, 1927. Also as the first crossing of the Polar Sea, 1927. Mit Liv Som Polarfiska, 1927. Translated as My Life as an Explorer, 1927. Bibliography, Roald Amundsen's Belgica Diary. The first scientific expedition to the Antarctic by Hugo Declay, Bluntisham Books, Erskine Press. The Last Place on Earth, Scott and Amundsen's Race to the South Pole by Roland Huntford, 1979. Roald Amundsen, A Full Biography by Tor Bowman Larson, 2006, ISBN 0-7509-4343-2, 
Scott and Amundsen are Euro Duel in the Ice by Raina K. Langner, House Publishing, London, 2007, ISBN 978 1 905791 08 8. See also, Arctic Exploration, Comparison of the Amundsen and Scott Expeditions, History of Antarctica, List of Antarctic Expeditions, List of Polar Explorers, Notes, Notes, References Books, Amundsen, Rowald. Nilsson, Thorvald. Priestrad, Christian. Chatter, A.G., 1912. The South Pole, An Account of the Norwegian Expedition in the Fram, 1910 Euro 12. London, C. Hurst and Company. ISBN A 0 903983 47 8. First published in 1912 by John Murray, London. Huntford, Rowland. The Last Place on Earth. London and Sydney, Pan Books. ISBN A 0 330 28816 4. External links The Fram Museum. Arctic Passage at PBS Nova features information about Amundsen, Roald Amundsen article at south-pole.com, short biography from Norwegian Foreign Ministry, DIO Vol. 10 2000 Amundsen's unparalleled record of polar firsts, including evidence that he was first to each geographical pole. Roald Amundsen at Find a Grave, works by Amundsen, works by Roald Amundsen at Project Gutenberg. Works by Roald Amundsen at Internet Archive and Google Books, The South Pole Arthur G. Chatter's 1912 Translation, works by all about Roald Amundsen in libraries.